Hello and welcome. This lecture, acti this lecture video will cover the investing activities section of the statement of cash flows. So with investing and financing activities, there's no direct indirect. Those concepts of direct indirect only apply to the operating activities section of the statement of cash flows, okay? So remember with investing activities, what we're talking about there are those transactions that affect long-term assets. So for example, purchasing and selling long-term assets such as buildings and land, okay? Lending and collecting on notes receivable, purchasing and selling short-term investments in other cash equivalents and trading securities, okay? So when we look back over here, going back in your course back to this page, we had some additional information on our company's 2011 transactions right there, okay? Purchase $70,000 in plant assets by paying $10,000 cash and issuing $60,000 of notes payable. So this is showing you right away that this is an investing activity. How do I know that? Because I purchased $70,000 in plant assets. That's telling me this is an investing activity. Sold plant assets with an original cost of $30,000 an accumulated depreciation of $12,000 for $12,000 cash, giving me a $6,000 loss. That is also investing. Received $15,000 cash from issuing 3,000 shares of common stock. I'll just go ahead and say that's not investing, but that's going to be financing. Paid $18,000 cash to retire notes, the $34,000 book value. That is financing. And then finally, the last one declared and paid cash dividends of 14000 That is also financing. So in this lecture video, we're going to be focusing on these two right there. Okay? Focusing on those two. So what we can do is we can redo the journal entries for those two transactions that we have right there. We can redo the journal entries for those two transactions. So we're set on the first one. We purchased $70,000 in plant assets. Now we're not told whether that's equipment or buildings or what, but I'm, so I'm just going to debit an account called plant assets. So this first one, I purchased plant assets. So I'm going to say debit to plant assets. And it says I purchased $70,000 in plant assets. And what am I, I'm referring to this right here. And then these two doing the journal entries for those two, okay? Plant assets by paying $10,000 cash. So I credited cash for 10,000, and then I have notes payable for 60,000, which was the balance, okay? That is my journal entry right there, okay? Then the second one, I says I sold plant assets with an original cost of $30,000 and accumulated depreciation of $12,000 for $12,000 cash, giving me a $6,000 loss, okay? So let's take a look at that journal entry. So with this one, I'm going to debit cash for $12,000 because I'm getting cash, and I'm going to, I'm going to, redo that down here running out of room debit cash for 12,000 now remember the journal entry to sell a plant asset so this is selling a plant asset so remember this accumulated depreciation $12,000 that's a normal balance this is a credit balance because the normal balance and accumulated depreciation is a credit because it's a contra asset account so if I want to zero out the balance of in accumulated depreciation what I need to do is to debit accumulated depreciation. So I'm going to debit accumulated depreciation for another $12,000. Now my original asset cost is $30,000 right there. So that is a debit balance of $30,000 because when I bought those plant assets, let's say I bought them a couple of years ago with cash, so I would have debited plant assets for $30,000. I would debit more in a specific account within plant assets, but we don't know what that is. 
So whether it's machinery, equipment, buildings, I don't know. But let's just say it's equipment. So when I purchase these plant assets, where I'm just saying that they're equipment, debit equipment, $30,000 credit cash. What I'm trying to tell you is that this is a debit balance. So if I want to zero it out because I'm selling it, I no longer have it. I need to credit plant assets for $30,000. Okay. Now, when we talk about gain or loss, remember this from Accounting 101? The way we calculate gain or loss is, first of all, we have to compare how much we sold it for, $12,000, to the book value of the asset. So remember book value, BV, book value, equals the asset cost minus accumulated depreciation. So in this case, my asset cost is 30,000. My accumulated depreciation is 12. That gives me a book value of $18,000, right? How much did I sell it for? $12,000. The amount that I sold it for is below the book value by $6,000. So when I sell it below book value, I'm selling it at a loss. And how much is the loss? the 18 minus the 12 or $6,000. So this is my loss and I'm just gonna write loss there. And that's for $6,000, which is the difference between how much I sold it for, the price at which I sold it, not so much cash, against the, the versus the book value of the asset, which is 18,000. So I have a $6,000 loss and this loss on the sale of equipment would be another expense, a non-operating expense on the income statement, okay? It's a non-operating expense on the income statement. So then we look over here, we've done the journal entries to reconstruct these events right there. Now we can report their cash flow events, effects. And what do we mean by that? We mean looking at any time that there is a debit or credit to cash. Well, here's the debit to cash. Cash received from the sales of plant assets was $12,000. Cash paid for the purchase, $10,000. What is my net cash inflow or outflow or provided or used? In this case, it's net cash provided of $2,000. Okay, net cash provided of $2,000. Now, give me a second. I'm going to turn the page over and do some T accounts to also illustrate some concepts associated with investing activities here. Okay, welcome back. So what I want to do now is do some T accounts to show you how we got from on this page for our Genesis company, our balance sheets over here, how we got from 210 to 250 in terms of our plant assets, right? Because you can see beginning balance plant asset, 210. Ending balance 250, and then for our accumulated depreciation, beginning balance 48, ending balance 60. How can we get to these two numbers? How do we get to these two numbers? So we can do that using T accounts. Okay, so with our plant assets, remember we had the beginning balance of 210. Remember that we purchased $70,000, and that's exactly what we did right over here. That debit to plant assets for $70,000. Okay, I'll move the camera over. Okay, that's $70,000 right over there. Okay, the $70,000 right here. Okay, so remember when we recreated, we debited plant assets. Well, here's the debit to plant assets. And then we sold, remember we credited plant assets there. 30,000. So when you add the 210 plus the 70 minus the 30, we get down to the 250. Okay. With our accumulated depreciation, we had a beginning balance as we just saw on the balance sheet, 48,000. Then we had an ending balance of 60,000. How did we get from 48 to 60? Well, remember on the income statement, if we look back over here, 
we had $24,000 of depreciation expense right there. $24,000 of depreciation expense. Okay. That journal entry was debit depreciation expense and then a credit to accumulated depreciation, $24,000. And then we were told that we sold plant assets right here. And we had that accumulated depreciation of $12,000. So that's the debit. So that's how we move from the 48 to the 60 because this is 12 and then 12 plus the 48 gets us to the 60, okay? So that concludes this lecture video. In the next lecture video, I'll be talking about financing activities, okay? Thanks so much.